Hi everyone, my name is Andrea Calabato and I'm an Extension Agent with UHC TARS Cooperative Extension Service. I provide outreach support for coffee producers statewide and orchard crop growers in West Hawaii. And today I'll be sharing management recommendations for coffee farming in the presence of coffee leaf rust and coffee berry borer. First, I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge and thank the agencies, organizations, businesses, coffee farms and farmers, and UAC TARS faculty and staff who give so much support to my extension program and to the industry. Coffee is Hawaii's number two most valuable agricultural commodity and is very important to those who grow it, process it, sell it, and drink it. My presentation will touch on the following topics of preventing the spread of coffee leaf rust, early detection with monitoring, pruning and desuckering, field sanitation, spraying to control CLR and CBB, and improving and maintaining tree and soil health for productivity. I'll round out the presentation with a summary for coffee management that considers both pests, as well as resources and upcoming events. Please remember that recommendations provided now will likely change in the future as we learn more about managing coffee leaf rust in Hawaii, are able to use other fungicides to replant with CLR resistant trees, and as new research results are shared by Hawaii scientists. Coffee leaf rust, which is known as the world's most damaging and devastating disease of coffee, was first found in Maui in late October 2020 and then in Kona. Within a year, it spread to all islands, though not every farm is currently infected by CLR. Once established, coffee leaf rust cannot be eradicated, is easily spread by wind and physical transfer, and so prevention and then proper management really is key. To prevent the spread of coffee leaf rust, we should be aware of and follow all Hawaii State Department of Agriculture rules and permits for coffee materials moving throughout the state as well as into the state. It is recommended that before, during, and after visiting any farm, regardless of CLR presence, that you disinfect your hands, clothing, footwear, tools, equipment, vehicles, and anything that could potentially harbor and spread CLR from one site to the next. Use at least 70% alcohol, a freshly made 10% bleach solution, and detergent, hot water, and dryer heat to kill coffee leaf rust spores. Early detection continues to be extremely important for farms as all commercially grown varieties in Hawaii are susceptible to rust. While there is a working group to address the importation, rearing, and distribution of resistant varieties, they are not yet available, and so we need to monitor for coffee leaf rust incidents and spots on coffee leaves. Systemic fungicides have not yet been approved for coffee in Hawaii, so research emphasizes the need to detect, monitor, and control CLR at a very low level of incidence of less than 5%. At a level higher than 5%, growers will likely see defoliation and leaf drop occur because we don't yet have access to true systemic fungicides. Coffee leaf rust can be easily missed when scouting, so knowing where to look can be very helpful. To detect an initial infection and in areas of low infection, try to check as many trees as possible for rust. Early in infection, CLR is typically found on leaves on the bottom third of the tree canopy. Observations in Hawaii also indicate that coffee leaf rust is found early on in areas where overstory trees shade coffee, where vehicles, pigs, workers, and other people frequent. If you're unsure if what you are looking at is coffee leaf rust, take a few photos and then send the photos to me or to the de Department of Agriculture and we can help you distinguish between CLR, Sarcospora leaf spot, and other problems. So what about those of us who have gone through a year of rust? Our trees are battered by rust, anthracnose, Sarcospora, and dieback. What do you do to bring your crop back this and next year? If your trees look like these, unfortunately, many of us are going to have to take the hit this year, bite the bullet, and stump a good portion of our trees. There are four main pruning methods used in Hawaii. Coffee pruning is recommended on a yearly basis and the suckering of excess branches is usually done about twice a year. Overall, pruning and desuckering helps to remove excess, older, and less productive verticals and laterals on trees 
to remove infected leaves and branches, and to encourage new growth. By opening up the canopy and allowing better airflow and sunlight penetration to the branches and base of the tree, you also reduce humidity and freestanding water, which helps coffee leaf rust spores germinate and survive. Stumping in large blocks can help growers to manage both CLR and CBB. When a farm is, in, is infected by CLR, selective or cone style pruning, as well as the Beaumont Fukunaga style or stump pruning by rows, does not provide the same control and financial benefits as block stumping. Stumping with a nurse vertical in large blocks and hedging have similar benefits to stumping outright, but the timely removal of nurse verticals and the removal of as many infected leaves and berries is critical to managing coffee leaf rust and CBB. In the next slide, I'm going to talk about first, second, and third year verticals. So I'll try to explain what these are first. Let's say you stump a coffee tree and new growth appears on the stump. These new verticals are in their first year of growth and considered first year verticals. They will not produce coffee in this first year. In their second year of growth, a second year vertical will have some production and their branches will get taller and longer. A third year vertical usually has the highest cherry production when compared to verticals in their first, second, and fourth years. Because of heavy production, their growth slows, so secondary laterals may develop, and the verticals tend to start bending over because of production and harvest. In some cases where healthy, lower elevation trees are grown, second year verticals can have more production than in the third year. Because of the arrival of coffee leaf rust and coffee berry borer, this year I'm recommending that farmers highly consider transitioning their farms to include block stumping a third of the orchard each year. Initially, there will be a reduction in harvest the long-term benefits of block stumping includes reduced labor and costs, reduced pest and disease pressure, the potential to increase yield, and the ability to synchronize the harvest and spray and harvest easier and more effectively. Block stumping helps by clearing large areas of coffee leaf rust infected leaves, as well as berries with coffee berry borer. CLR will be minimal in the first year of growth on the stump blocks and growers will be able to regain control and restart with healthy verticals with little to no rust. During the transition to block stumping, the remaining two sections will need to be selectively pruned to maintain production. In the section that will be pruned at the end of the current 2022-2023 season, keep up to three, not six, not 10, but three, second year verticals per stump, or keep a combination of no more than three first and second year verticals, then prune off all other branches. This will help remove verticals that are bent over, too tall, heavily infected, less productive, and non-productive. In the section that would be pruned at the end of the following season, leave up to three first year verticals or a combination of three new, first and second year verticals and prune all other growth off. These young verticals will give you two years of production before the trees are stumped. Hedging and skeleton pruning can be attempted in this third section if there are no young verticals present on the stump. Trees with live lateral, lateral branches will generate secondary laterals that can produce a large crop in their first year of production. However, these trees get very thick and dense, which can make spraying and harvesting difficult, so please be aware of this. These photos show trees that were hedged and in their second year growth with good production, but you'll notice how dense the foliage can get. Tree height can also be a problem because you won't be able to bend the vertical during harvest on hedged trees. So do you spray before you prune or do you spray after you prune? A good way to think about this is to ask yourself, how can I prevent coffee leaf rust spores from germinating and infecting more leaves? Some growers will spray right before they start pruning, so they're not spreading live spores, while other growers will prune and then spray immediately after they're done to kill the live spores that they've just spread before the spores can germinate. Either way would work, but there are caveats still. 
if the weather is rainy, you should probably spray before you prune so you stop the spread of live spores that could then germinate in the wet weather. If it's a large farm and pruning takes a couple of weeks, you might spray before you prune and then again while you're still pruning. A product like Oxidate is good because you don't have to wait 48 hours before re-entering the field after you spray, like with copper products. Oxidate just needs to dry on the leaves and then you can continue pruning. Mulch your prunings into the rows or chip pile and cover for at least six weeks to kill any live spores. If you're concerned about the spread of live spores, spray your prune branches and piles. Field sanitation is important for CBB and CLR management. Please don't forget to strip pick prior to pruning and remove all green to ripe and raisin berries from the trees to protect your new crop. If you have CBB traps in the field, a young green berries have already developed on branches, consider removing, cleaning, and storing the traps for next year. To make spraying easier and more effective, as well as to reduce splashback of CLR from the ground to coffee branches, Remove low branches to make harvesting and spraying easier and more effective. Remove unwanted coffee ceilings that could harbor coffee leaf rust. And maintain weeds and ground cover around coffee trees. The incubation period of our current rust raised 24 is about 20 days. So in warm, rainy or drizzly weather, we will need to increase the frequency of spraying to no more than 20 days apart to kill spores produced by CLR spots. We will also need to rotate between different frac groups to prevent coffee leaf rust from building up resistance against our pesticides. Most of our approved fungicides are considered contact and preventative fungicides, and so we will need to spray early in infection to slow the spread of CLR. Only Preaxar Zemium, there in green, provides protection of the leaves from germinating spores in between fungicide sprays, but even Preaxar needs to be sprayed when there are a few spots on the leaves for effectiveness. The reason we need to spray when infection is low and under 5% is because spore generation and infection can be exponential even with spraying. To give you a visual example of how different spraying scenarios could affect infection level over time, I created a graph of hypothetical situations. Many of us have seen what no spraying of fungicides can do to trees. We get this red line, lots of spots in a short amount of time, and then we see heavy defoliation as a result. Some of us sprayed, but sprayed too late when there were lots of spots on the leaves already or missed some sprays. We see the blue line where in the beginning, the sprays seem to work, and then we quickly realize that there are a lot of spots on the leaves and the leaves are starting to fall from the trees. For those of us who sprayed fungicides prior to the arrival of coffee leaf rust or started spraying early in infection when there were few signs of rust, the yellow line might depict how our season went this year. The number of lesions were slow to increase at the beginning, but we did see an increase in spots and had some defoliation. However, our coffee was still harvestable with little, little defects. In the future, hopefully with research showing us better rotations and providing us with better fungicides, we will see a lower level of infection and see fewer side effects on leaf drop than we do now like what the green line is showing. Bavaria and CLR fungicides are expensive, so get the most out of them during each application. When using any type of pesticide, please read and follow all label directions. Cover up with the proper personal protective equipment to protect yourself and workers from any health hazards while handling, mixing, and applying pesticides. Under and over applying pesticides can have legal, environmental, and, fin and financial repercussions. So calibrate your sprayer to ensure that proper pesticide rates are used and that the application is effective and in managing the pest or disease. If you need a refresher, please join us for sprayer calibration field days this coming March. Most fungicides can be tank mixed with Bavaria, but tank mixing with Oxidate is not recommended and mixing with Preaxor is not allowed. Lastly, including a surfactant with pesticides, can help obtain better spray coverage by allowing water droplets to spread and cover more of the leaf and berry surfaces. Open up the canopy to make spraying easier and more effective. Remove low hanging and excess laterals and verticals so that the spray solution can get to all leaves and berries. CLR lesions produce spores on the underside of the leaves 
So be sure that the fungicide spray is directed to the underside of the leaves as well as to the top sides to kill live spores. Raising the height of the stump can also help you so you can spray the underside of the lowest laterals. Use surround WP or water sensitive paper to test if you're getting good spray coverage throughout the tree. If you're not getting good coverage, focus on the quality of the spray application and slow your walking or driving speed for more deliberate applications. And consider using other sprayers, wands, nozzles, and pressure or aperture settings that may help you obtain better coverage. Whenever making a spray application and any modifications to spray equipment, calibrate and recalibrate your sprayer. For example, slowing your walking speed to concentrate on getting the spray under the leaves will likely increase water use per acre, and using more water will change your rate of product per gallon of water when tank mixing. We've created an Excel sheet that helps to eliminate hand calculations and reduce error when calibrating sprayers and calculating rates of pesticides per gallon or tank full of water. Once you've calibrated your sprayer, all you need to enter into the spreadsheet is the product name, the rate per acre, which you can get from the label or from me, and spray tank volume. All other numbers will either be carried over from the calibration worksheet or calculated automatically. You can download the Excel spreadsheet and supporting document at the hawaiicoffeeed.com forward slash square calc website. Healthy trees and soil can help to increase or at least maintain high tree yields given that the plants are provided with the proper type, amount, and frequency of fertilizers. A healthy, well-maintained tree can produce 15 to 20 pounds of cherry and sometimes even more. Coffee leaf and soil samples are recommended to be taken at least annually during flowering to better understand tree nutrition and soil pH and nutrient status. These results can help with fertilizer adjustments and to mitigate deficiencies and toxicities in the soil and plant tissues. Coffee root knot nematode is a major root pest on the Big Island, and so it's recommended to replant with grafted trees to address dead and poorly producing trees with nematode damage and to replace older plants. As needed, supplement macro and micronutrients by spraying foliar fertilizers, which many can be combined with fungicide and bovaria applications. And lastly, increase soil microbe and organiz organism diversity with composting, mulching, and the use of ground covers to keep the soil as healthy as possible. Coffee leaf rust is relatively new in Hawaii, and so it's a learning process on how to best manage this disease. I'll go through six points to try and bring it all together in a summary. Managing new pests and diseases is expensive and can be devastating to businesses and industries. We should all help prevent the spread of pests and diseases by following sanitation practices and quarantine regulations. Growers should be monitoring for initial infestations and managing CBB and CLR early in infection and throughout the season. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to strip pick prior to pruning to remove all remaining berries from the past coffee season. Prune in large blocks to reduce the amount of infected leaf material, to encourage new productive growth, to increase airflow through the trees and farm, to decrease excess humidity and shade, improve spray coverage, and to make other farm activities easier and more effective. Prune selectively on the other sections to retain the most productive verticals until stumping can be implemented. Rotate between fungicides in the different frac groups to prevent pesticide resistance and spray at least every 20 days to kill spores before they can germinate and infect leaves. Spray from the start of the coffee season to minimize lesions on leaves and to protect branches from defoliation. Your goal should be to retain as many leaves on the trees as possible so that the leaves can support flowering, fruit development, and fruit ripening. And lastly, throughout the year and as needed, maintain weed control, remove unwanted coffee seedlings that could harbor CLR, fertilize the trees, and mulch and compost to improve and maintain tree and soil health. Please visit my hawaiicoffeeed.com website for up-to-date information on various coffee pests and problems, CBB and CLR information, ag announcements, and other coffee-related information. If you hover on the events and announcements tab, it'll pull down a listing of our upcoming events. Please join us. Also, if you're in the coffee industry or know folks in the industry, 
our, coffee, our Hawaii coffee industry needs assessment and coffee leaf rest survey is still open. We welcome your feedback and have the survey translated into Spanish as well. With that, I'd like to thank you very much for this opportunity to share information with you today. And if you have any requests, concerns, or questions, please feel free to contact me. Thank you.